Hey, my name is Ben. Thanks for stopping by. Today we're going to install an electric water heater and I'm going to show you the step-by-step -step process for how to do that and the materials you're going to need uh, for wiring it as well. So uh, we'll start by figuring out what you're going to need for your electrical. In case uh, you're going to be adding this, you're going to want to make sure that you have two spaces available in your electrical panel. Uh, here I have a QO electrical panel, square D, and uh, you need a double space available for a 30 amp double pole breaker. And it's uh, typically, uh, typically water heaters are 240 volts, which is why it's two poles. There's 120 volts on each pole. Uh, so that's what you're gonna need in your panel, a 30 amp breaker. I will link in the description to the materials you're gonna need. You have to make sure that the breaker you buy is specific to the type of panel that you have. So. I'll uh, do my best to link to kind of the common ones. All right, and then you're gonna need wire. So for a uh, water heater that draws 4,500 watts, which you can see right here on my particular water heater, uh, we have 4,500 watt um, on our elements. Now for uh, that capacity, you're gonna need a 10-2 wire. Now this is white because this is a little bit older style wire, but typically it would be orange just like it is over here for my dryer, I'll show you. So this orange color wire here is the, the color that they designate for uh, 10 gauge wire. So typically you'll be looking for an orange coil of wire when you go to the home center. And again, you need 10 two. So what that means is you're gonna have uh, two hot conductors. In this case, I have one on either side. Uh, and then you'll have a ground wire. So you actually have a total of three wires in a 10-2 wire. Uh, if you're gonna do a dryer, an electric dryer requires 10-3 because you have to have a third wire for a neutral because a dryer uses 120 volt, some aspects of it use 120 volts. Anyway, so 10-2 wire is gonna, what you're gonna want for your water heater. So you got your breaker, you got your wire, and then finally you'll uh, be choosing your water heater uh, based on your electrical panel and assuming you had enough space for it. This is a really large water heater uh, because it is an off-peak system, so the electrical company gives a discounted rate for allowing the, them to turn the water heater on and off. So you need a larger thermal storage capacity. This is a marathon water heater. It's a really high quality uh, unit. Uh, I'd highly recommend them. They have uh, lifetime tank warranty and there's a few other things that are pretty sweet about them so uh, there we've got the electrical aspects covered and then whatever plumbing fittings you're going to need to connect to the top of your water heater as well so uh, we'll go ahead and start with the plumbing aspects of this guy first on the installation on the top of the water heater here, it has specifically uh, what each port is. This uh, center one here, this is a relief valve. That's in case there's ever an overpressure condition, this will release um, the uh, water pressure so that it doesn't explode. And this here, on um, this type of marathon water heater, as a air, it's a vacuum breaker basically. So uh, if there becomes a vacuum in this tank, which could happen for a number of reasons, it will allow a little bit of air into the tank. You will only see these on these marathon water heaters or ones that don't have a metal tank. If it has a metal tank, you won't see this uh, kind of different looking valve. And uh, you have to be really careful with these. This, this, uh, the way these seal on here, there's actually a, a rubber gasket in here. So this is just, uh, this just, squeezes down onto that rubber gasket and so you don't need any thread tape or pipe dope or anything on these threads going into this style tank. So uh, typically you would need to use thread tape and pipe dope like we're going to do on our PEX adapters here. So uh, the other thing that we always want to remember is to put a cold or a valve on our cold water line coming in to the tank. So if you need to shut it off, you can do that. You don't necessarily need one on the hot side, but it, it still is beneficial just to uh, make things easier. So uh, we'll go ahead and get this fitting ready so you can see how we're doing that. Uh, I'm using PEX today, and uh, I highly recommend PEX. It's, it uh, has a pretty good reputation and works pretty well. So um, I'll put link a link in the description to tools and a few things that might be beneficial for you. 
And uh, yeah, we'll put some thread tape and uh, pipe dope on this. Now, I've showed this in other videos too, but uh, the way you hold this kind of, it, it makes it either easier or more miserable. So if you hold uh, the Teflon tape in your right hand uh, with the uh, Teflon coming off the top, as you can see here, and hold the fitting in your left hand, and then start by putting the uh, Teflon on the bottom side of the fitting, just like this. And then we'll wrap it in this direction. Say we'll go with about four rounds on this. Two, three, four. And then break it off. There we go. All right, now you can see right here that when you when you tighten your fitting on, it's going to want to put this, tighten this uh, tape onto the fitting. So that's why it's important the way you wrap it around there. So, and then in addition to that, we're going to use some pipe dope. Because if you use both thread tape and pipe dope, you are very, very unlikely to have a leak. It's the way we've been doing it for years and years uh, at the plumbing company I work at. So there we go. Now we're ready to just get that started here. Uh, this has not been tightened in here yet to this uh, gasket down here, but we will snug all these up when we're ready. I got that PEX adapter tightened in there, and now we're just going to go ahead and tighten this into this fitting here. Now we have to remember that there's a gasket doing the work for us, so uh, when you're, whenever you're working with gaskets, you have to kind of let them do their thing and don't over tighten it. The beautiful thing about PEX too, uh, not that you want to plan on it, come on buddy, uh, but you can actually tighten a fitting after the crimp has been done. Alright, so let me just go a little bit snugger on this. I'm going to have to remember we're letting the gasket do the work, so maybe a little more if I can get it on there. That's about it. Alright. Now these fittings that are pre-tightened are pre-attached on here. You can take these off if you need to turn them a little bit, but um, I don't need to. There's no reason to, so I'm just going to um, put my crescent wrench on there and then tighten this up here. Now this is called double wrenching. Uh, you're, I'm holding the lower fitting here in place while I tighten the other one and that prevents it from moving in the tank. We do not want to put strain on these marathon water heaters on the connections going into the tank or it can cause the tank to leak because it's not a metal tank. So just need to stabilize that by double wrenching it and you'll be fine. So these fittings you can get pretty good and tight because it's a traditional threaded connection. It's not relying on that uh, that gasket like we were talking about earlier. So I'll finish that up. We'll just get all of our PEX pieces uh, dry fitted. Now I'm just using this uh, tubing cutter here Four and three quarters, what we're going for. Hold my fingernail there if I can. Sometimes you can use the lettering on the side of the pipe too to kind of guide where you're cutting. And you just kind of rock this back and forth until it pops off. Got all our fittings dry fitted here. So we're ready to crimp some of them in place here. Just uh, be intentional to look out for spots where uh, like up here, I need to take this apart and crimp this first, otherwise I'll have difficulty getting my crimper in there because it's so close to this wood right here. So but I'll go ahead and just crimp one here for you to see. This is my favorite type of crimping tool, but there's a few different types. You can get stainless steel rings with a, a cinch type crimper, or you can get this style. This is for crimping the copper crimp rings. 
which I'd say my, the copper ones are probably my favorite. There you go. Fitting done. Leave about an eighth inch between the edge of the crimp ring and the end of the pipe here uh, just for a better connection. So we'll go ahead and get all these crimped up here. Now from the relief valve here, we're going to run this down to the floor, so back and down, uh, and bring it within six inches of the floor to make sure that it's safe if it were ever to trip. Um, it wouldn't uh, burn somebody uh, if you don't put them on there. There's a higher chance. It's just safer if you get that water down within six inches of the floor. Everything's crimped. Just double check and feel to make sure that you got, did indeed get them all crimped. It's kind of easy to miss one. So once you've double checked them, uh, we should be good here now to start filling the water heater while we uh, finish up on some of these other aspects like wiring it. So as you can see, we have our shutoff valve on the hot side. And this, like I said, is kind of was optional. This just makes it so that when you disconnect the water heater, you can close this and all the hot water pipes in the house don't drain back. But that is optional. The one on the cold side is a lot more uh, mandatory or really good idea to have that there so you don't have to shut the whole house off in order to turn off the, the uh, hot water heater or the water heater. Um, okay, before we do that, let's uh, double check to make sure that our valve on the bottom is closed which it feels like it is let me there's open so yep that's closed so we're gonna go ahead and start filling it we'll turn on the cold water as well as the hot water and then we'll go and open the hot water valve of a faucet to bleed the air out of the system. So it'll take it a while. Some awful noises coming from this thing as it fills up, spazzing out. Okay, we're gonna take the electrical cover off here. There's two Phillips screws here. And this top cover here should just lift off. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, double check that in here, this just pulls off like this and drops down, and we can put our connector in here, we're just us using an NM non-metallic sheathed cable, so we can use one of these uh, NM uh, connectors here to put through. So we'll just get that in there right away. Snug that up. Okay. Now make sure that you get the power disconnected uh, if your water heater was uh, already installed or whatever. Just make sure you don't have any power. And I'm gonna double check here using my electrical tester. Volts alternating current. I'm just gonna check between two of these wires on here to be absolutely sure that we are safe. Yep, and we have no voltage there. I'll check to ground as well. And yep, we should be good to go. So we're gonna strip this back now. Oh, this far. I don't know, about six inches, maybe five inches. Uh, you just take a uh, utility knife or a cable ripper and go right down the middle of this cable. And uh, if you stay in the middle, that's where the ground wire is. So you're most likely not going to damage the the wires underneath. All right, there we have that. And then we'll cut off the extra. Beautiful. Now we'll use a wire stripper and strip back about a half an inch of insulation on each one of these. And again, this is 10 gauge, so we go to the 10 gauge setting. And pull that off if we can. There we go. And the same thing on the opposite wire. There we go. 
Now, since we have one wire that is white and one that is black, uh, whenever you have a white wire that is being used as a power wire and not a neutral, you should wrap it with black tape so that people in the future will know that it is not a neutral. So we will do that now. You should, you know, anyone working on it should know that this is not a neutral because this water heater requires 240 volts, but still, just to be safe. And now we'll feed these wires through our connector there. And we'll bring the the unstripped portion of the cable in about a half inch. Take our screwdriver and snug these up. You really don't want to tighten these a lot. You just want it to be just tight enough to keep the cable from sliding in and out. It's not if you clamp it too hard, you can cause a you can cause it to short. So just like that is adequate. And we'll connect our grounding wire. There's a I'll see if I can get closer up here for you. We've bent ourselves a hook there so we can get our ground connected. Probably it's a little bit tricky getting it in there. There we go. Get that good and tight. There we go. Ground is done. And then we're going to use these big uh, red wire nuts to connect to our incoming power. Get those lined up nice and even. Like so. And then go ahead and start our wire, wire nut. Get it as tight as you can by hand. And then I like to use my uh, electrical stripper to just get it a little bit snugger. You could use a, a pliers or whatever to do that. And we'll do the same thing to our second leg here. So there we go. And we'll just lay these down here so that there's room for the cover to go back on. I'm just going to leave the cover off for now because I want to check my amp draw here in a little while through that loop once we get it turned on. 105 gallons later our water heater is now full and so we are ready to turn on the breaker. It's probably one of the most common mistakes a, a homeowner might make is turning on the breaker too soon. I have uh, went to places where they put in their own uh, water heater and it doesn't work and they want us to fix it under warranty and I pull the element out and the element's like just drooped down into the water heater because it basically was a glowing red hot. Alright, so it is now uh, on. Now I am on an energy management program so I'm not sure if this is actually going to be drawing amperage right now because it might be cycled off but we'll just see Yep, and that is the case right now, so I'll probably have to wait a while to uh, see my water heater actually come on. Uh, but anyway, that's pretty much been it. We will put this cover back on here. And we need to make sure that we put our relief valve pipe on, which I will do. Because that is important. Now it'll probably take three, four, five, six. <laughs> hours for this to heat up all the way because I have such a large tank but for most applications it'd be more like three or four hours for a typical 50 gallon water heater and uh, yeah I think it should work great I hope this video helped you out if it did please hit that subscribe button down below and uh, yeah hit that bell icon if you want to be notified about future videos also I'll leave a link in the description to any helpful tools or accessories or parts or water heaters <laughs> that uh, might be useful to you so you can check there if you're interested. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching and we'll talk to you in the next video. See ya.